Patrol the Movie. The pups have been a dominant force both on TV and in the toy industry to the point of becoming billion dollar dogs. Might as well write it off as crap and move on to the next section, right? No. No. 150, 40, 30, 20, 10. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Paul Reacts episode here at Paul's Aviation Vlogs, where aviation meets the vloggers. And today's episode, I'm gonna be reacting to a video by YouTuber Electric Dragon 505. And it says here, a grown childless man is reviewing Paw Patrol the movie. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be interesting because I haven't watched the video yet though. So, I don't know, I really don't know what to expect. And yes, I'm using a different screen recorder now since uh, Panopto won't load for some reason. Okay, so let's get started. And yes. Paw Patrol the movie. I would like to make an important statement. I am a grown adult man in my late 20s with no children of my own, a childless millennial, if you will, who is about to make a video review of Paw Patrol the movie. The, 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 way, the way he's saying the title just seems to set me off the edge for some reason, but... I want to start this off by giving out a huge thanks to Paramount Pictures for simultaneously releasing this both in theaters and on streaming for not only giving that option to keep kids safe during some frightening times, but to also give me the option to stay at home and avoid the situation of going to the cinema alone and sitting in my corner with no one else around me watching Paw Patrol on the big screen. Yeah. And I have to be honest right now, um, I watched Paw Patrol the movie at home with my family. And yes, it was a really wonderful experience for me. <laughs> what can I say? What's not to love about Paw Patrol the movie? There are very few things in this world that can be more awkward than that. And no, explaining that I'm a critic would not solve the problem. That's even worse! You're in shock, so I'm not gonna take that personally. Anyways, like I said, as a childless adult, as of this review, it's safe to say that I have never seen an episode of Paw Patrol before, and this movie will be my first full experience of the team doing what they do best. Alright, I, I, forgive me for saying this, but it, it sounds kind of ironic though. Even though me, um, as a freshman fanatic, as I like to call it, since I uh, just started liking Paw Patrol during the late June 2021, Anyways, um, being a freshman fanatic myself, it's kind of ironic to be watching the movie and considering it your first time seeing Paw Patrol itself. Although, the good thing is that Animat did hear about Paw Patrol since, since everyone and every kid is a buzz about Paw Patrol. <laughs> anyway, continue. To save the day. However, I am well aware of its great cultural impact as not only the most popular preschool series that's currently on television, but also one of the biggest preschool shows in history. I can agree to that. <laughs> and yeah. Ever since Bob the Builder creator Keith Chapman sent the pups on their first big mission in 2013 by teaching children valuable lessons like the importance of teamwork and helping their community, the pups have been a dominant force both on TV and in the toy industry to the point of becoming billion dollar dogs. Seriously, <laughs> don't underestimate their little cuteness. Ryder is running a powerful empire that's bigger than some countries. That's so now true, that the Paw Patrol is off on their biggest adventure yet, will the pups save both the city and the movie? Or are they more suited to just television size adventures? I prefer both. Let's find out. Okay. The story. The most important thing to remember about this is that as a Paw Patrol movie, it is primarily made for Paw Patrol fans. 
meaning that it's going to mostly cater to the youngest viewers. So in order for mm -hmm. the children to be on board with the pup's adventure, the story has to be simplified and have everything be clear for them to follow along and retain their attention for 80 minutes. Yeah. While the movie portrays their mission as the biggest one yet, it's about the Paw Patrol moving into the big city to do what they do best by saving the day and cleaning up Mayor Humdinger's mess every time he does something stupid that goes horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. As probably expected, the story turns out to be easily predictable with how obvious it foreshadows what's to come, can sometimes be repetitive with the rescue missions following a similar mm -hmm. pattern, and the tone can feel pretty cheesy with the way it plays up with the emotions to the point that it's hard to take it seriously. Granted, there can be a handful of moments where it can be unironically funny, but the humor in general is on the levels of juvenile. The shoddily built upside down subway turned out to be a steaming hot pile of, dare I say, poop. <laughs> now, Dude, it gets me every time. <laughs> Dude, the first, the first time I heard Marty McRaker say that line, I can't get it out of my head. And every time he says it again, every time I uh, watch the movie another time, I just seem to like laugh that. It seems to laugh the heck out of myself. Considering who this movie is for, those flaws can be forgiven because it's obviously not made for the experienced moviegoer looking for something deep and thought-provoking. I mean, this is Paw Patrol, not an art house film. <laughs> Dude, what is that? Dude. Oh, wait, what? I really like this. I like that. I like that. I like the photoshopping job. Also, writer's beard. What the... <laughs> Oh man, this is so But what is hard to forgive is how a big part of the movie's intentions is to sell toys to children. Uh. And there's nothing subtle in this movie either. The film really takes its time to highlight the pup's gadgets and vehicles to show what cool abilities they could do. That's one major factor that I liked about the movie. I mean, even that uh, the pups mostly rely on their gadgets to save the day. So there. Resulting in some scenes to feel less like a genuine action-packed feature and more like a glorified toy commercial. This is making me rethink Paw Patrol the movie per se. This is your new car. New Chase Transforming City Cruiser 2-in-1 Vehicle with Armor Mode comes to show and riders sold separately. Yep, this is definitely making me rethink Paw Patrol the movie entirely. So there. I'm sure by this point, it's expected to hear that the story is not groundbreaking or really anything worth remembering. Might as well write it off as crap and move on to the next section, right? No. No. Um... About that. What? Yes, this is not a great story, but I don't think I can say that the writing is bad. The material does hold them back from making a Pixar level of a masterpiece, but it shows that the filmmakers did try to put in some effort to make this movie meaningful. To supply some genuine substance to balance out the capitalist purpose of just selling toys. Okay. Along with the humor that I already said can have its good moments, there is also an additional side plot regarding Chase trying to conquer his fear of the big city, which also goes into his backstory of how he was found by Ryder and joined the Paw Patrol. This has got to be the cutest scene in Paw Patrol the movie. I mean, genuinely, the only pup that I've seen as a baby is Chase, of course. I mean, check that out! I mean, I'm also curious, um, do we also get to see the backstory of the other pups? We don't know for sure, but nah, let's, let's see. I hope the Mighty Movies um, side plot is about Sky's past, or I don't know. I mean, Sky is going to be the main focus on the Mighty Movie, but anyways, let's go back to the original movie, the Mighty Movie Star until 2023 anyway.
It's not handled that well, and what can seem like significant moments often turn out to be just throwaway scenes, but it does surprisingly give the movie some effective heart, allowing the audience to have an emotional connection with Chase, showing more of his relationship with Ryder, and prove that there is more to him than just some one-note brave hero. Also, yeah. I'll get more into this a little later, but another surprising element is how engaging the movie can be because of the action. Agreed. Yes, it's a children's film, but that doesn't hold the movie back from making the rescue mission pretty intense by putting both the pups and the civilians in life-threatening situations. Mm -hmm. So, at the very least, a good motivator to keep watching the film is to see how the Paw Patrol will save people in the next dangerous situation and how big they can be. Again, yeah. I know nobody is expecting a big epic story with Paw Patrol, or even a strong one for that matter. Mm -hmm. But for the kind of story it does have, the writing does what it can to make the most out of it. The animation. Yep. This is another factor that I like about Paw Patrol, the movie. The pups look so hyper-realistic, per se. And yes, everything else just seems so real hands down. Even if, at the most, I've only seen quick clips of the show, I could say right now that not only did the animation receive an upgrade, but this is one of the most admirable attempts of elevating <laughs> television CG animation into feature quality visuals with a bigger budget and more time to define the look, yet still remaining true to the style of the show. One yeah. thing that hasn't changed and that the animators cleverly didn't touch is the designs, as it still remains the same as the series to be more appealing to toddlers with just yeah. about everything looking cute, and almost everything <laughs> is more rounded with bright colors to have them be more approachable and look more friendly. Yeah. However, even with the same designs, the one thing that stands out more than the animation of the show is the attention to detail. How yeah. the pups and the people gained additional texture on their fur, their clothing, and even the vehicles that they drive are purposely crafted to look more like the toys that the kids play with by having a more plastic look than being fully metallic. Not only that, but the details are most prominent in the backgrounds. Sure, Adventure City is nothing more than just a generic city and there isn't anything creatively interesting to see around the characters, except maybe the Paw Patrol's headquarters that is built like the pup's high-tech base. But what is fascinating about them is how grand the places can feel. If the action yeah. wants to feel big, then the city must feel big too. And the mm -hmm. details come into play to present a fully functioning and living metropolis. And it's thanks to all that detail that makes the movie Shit. more immersive. While it is still a Paw Patrol world, there is a more believable look to feel like what is on screen can relatably feel like real life. Yeah, I so agree though. I mean, check this out. Look, Adventure City looks like a huge metropolis right now. Dude, that's crazy. Wake up, pups! We're here! Oh, wow. wow! It's amazing! This place is so much bigger than Adventure Bay! But the true highlights of the animation and the moments that make this more than just a typical kitty flick are the action scenes. Yep. With the addition of the strong amount of detail, the movie also contains a lot of effects, and the feature mm -hmm. takes advantage of using its strong assets to creatively make the most out of them. Also thanks to the large scale of Adventure City, it allows the scenarios to be as big and dangerous as possible to emphasize the mood of the moment and be engaging to see how the Paw Patrol will save the day. Rather it be from a fireworks show gone horribly wrong, a roller coaster subway track about to break, or a hurricane-like storm destroying a piece of a building. This part kind of got me screaming, I have to be honest right now. Yeah. I would lie if I said that I came in expecting nothing would be well done in this, but the visuals went above my expectations, and even I have to admit that, for the kind of movie this is, the animation is honestly quite impressive. Mm -hmm. The characters. 
Another thing I like about the movie. Check them out. They look so cool. <laughs> You've probably heard how the movie features an all-star cast filled with recognizable celebrities like Jimmy Kimmel, Kim Kardashian, Tyler Perry, and several others. However, I'll say right now that if the character is not either Chase, Liberty, Mayor Humdinger, or maybe Ryder, then they honestly don't really matter. As the story has to be simplified for the youngest viewers, that also means the characters have to be simplified to the point where, despite a decently sized cast, most of them only serve one purpose to the story with only one trait either to supply their own running gag, or in most of the dog's cases, to show off their contribution to the team and how they solve a problem. However, for those who are relevant to the story, there is Chase and Ryder, who are, in a way, the protagonists of the movie, where one is the top dog in charge of saving the people who are in danger, and the other is the human leader who manages the dogs and the problems whenever anyone needs help. And apparently, He's also in charge of the team's financing. How can we afford this place? Officially licensed Paw Patrol merchandise. Look at that. How, how in, how, how, how? That's, that's like, that's literally like the question that I asked the first time I saw this scene. How does the, how does he even, <laughs> how does he even do <laughs> I have so many hows right now. Seriously, dude. How? How? This stuff sells like hotcakes. Seriously, he could have saved so much time and trouble by buying the whole city, but he's thankfully merciful enough to not pursue a monopoly. Anyways, another job Ryder has to do is making sure Chase is okay while working in the big city. Since it was there where the German Shepherd was abandoned when he was little and felt like he was too small to survive in this world. While some could argue that it is a weak character arc, it is still something compared to most others, and the way it's handled here is heartwarming. Not only to present the strong bond between the two, but to also give a message to kids about facing your fears. That even heroes that many look up to get scared, and that's okay, because the bravest are the ones who take action from when they are the most frightened. What I saw was a brave, heroic pup. Even though you were too uh. small to look after yourself and you were up against all those scary things, you got back up and kept going. Another prominent character is Liberty, the new unofficial member of the team that is the expert of Adventure City. But she can get annoying at times by mostly acting like the fangirl of the Paw Patrol. And then there's Mayor Humdinger, the villain of both the show and this movie, who has become the new mayor of the city and is beloved by no one by running the place like an America first-minded Republican politician and have an overinflated ego. Among all the cartoon bad guys in recent years, he has got to be the most stereotypical villain. He hates dogs and wants to get rid of the Paw Patrol. He only cares about himself. He thinks he's better and smarter than everyone. He has a couple of bumbling henchmen, <laughs> and he even has a top hat and a sinisterly twirly mustache. Everything about him is the most cliche depiction of a villain, and I honestly like the guy for that. Yes, I also do. <sighs> but even though... But um, I want to share my own opinions, though. Even though, like, Mayor Humdinger does hate the Paw Patrol, that doesn't make him any better to get rid of them. Or, should I say, try to get rid of them. So, there. He is so unapologetically stereotypical, and he's having so much fun with it. By that point, who cares if he's not the most creative villain? With a movie like this, why not enjoy some classic bad guy shenanigans? And this guy does um. not disappoint on his vintage villainy. I'm going to put the adventure back in Adventure City. I mean, you don't call it Adventure City for nothing, but also, again, that doesn't make you any better to like run the city all chaotic and such. When I'm done with this place, you won't even recognize it. <laughs> But there is one more factor worth discussing with the cast that does play a major factor in the overall tone. The voice acting. Yep. 
voice acting is the one thing that kind of stands out in a character, or should I say an animated character. So there. This has got to be some of the hammiest performances I've heard in an animated movie. Now, I get a lot of them are just kids being kids, and they act like how they do in the show. That's fine. But when even the adults feel the need to be goofy with their acting, that's when they really are emphasizing that this is a kid's movie and only a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. Call the police. Call the fire department. Call everybody. You're in Adventure Bay. Here, we call the Paw Patrol. You gotta call the who? In a way, it's understandable why they're not great movie characters. They're not here to show off their acting skills or go deep with their personalities. They're just trying to help save Adventure City from trouble. I'll be real with you all. I've been looking at this analytically the whole time and try not to overuse the it's for kids excuse so that its flaws are worth noting. And yet, even when looking past the fact that it's made for children, like on its own, I think this is actually a pretty good film. Every Paw Patrol fanatic agrees. Paw Patrol the movie is an enjoyable and well-crafted animated feature. Yes, this is for preschoolers, and its problems are so that they can get on board with it, like... I'm 14. But I freaking watched the show. So help me, haters. The overly simplified story and characters, the hammy acting, the juvenile tone, and the shameless way it tries to sell the toys. But, on the other hand, the team provided enough materials to have this be a solid feature with a good heart that comes with a nice message of facing your fears, great animation, and a surprising amount of engaging action. I think it's safe to say that fans of Paw Patrol are gonna love this, and kids will have a great time. However, when it comes to the adults that accompany them, I think they might have some fun with it too. Maybe not as much as the little ones, but I'm sure there are worse movies out there, so at least there won't be any harm with this one. Yes, I am a grown man. I currently have no kids of my own, and I am not ashamed to say that I enjoy the Paw Patrol movie. I'm here. I enjoy Paw Patrol the movie, and I am not ashamed about it. So, again, so help me, haters. Okay. So, Animat rates the story 6 out of 10, Animation 9 out of 10, Characters 5 out of 10. So, let's just say that's a fair rating. And the movie by itself is 7 out of 10. That's great. Alright guys, so that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And again, a shout out to, to Electric Dragon 505 and the Paw Patrol franchise. Thanks you for uh, reviewing Paw Patrol the movie. Even though I... Even though you are a grown childless man, I don't mind. I mean, there, to be honest, there are some adults way older who like Paw Patrol the movie. And... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And please also don't forget to subscribe to Pulse Aviation Vlogs or Aviation Meets the Vloggers. Just for some channel promotion, be sure to subscribe to Electric Dragon 505 as well. He really, yeah, he's a very awesome YouTuber. And I gotta say, I gotta give, I give a thumbs up to this video. Be sure to give a thumbs up to this video as well. And yes, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Once again, be sure to like and subscribe to Pulse Aviation Vlogs for Aviation Meets the Vloggers and also Electric Dragon 505. Don't forget to subscribe to Pulse Aviation Gaming where Aviation Meet plays with the gamers. I will see you in the next Pulse Reacts video. A peace out. What is up, YouTube? I can agree to that. And yeah.
ever since Bob the Builder creator Keith Chapman. So, in order for the children to be on board with the pup. That's so much. 